really like Colin Weinberger. He's done his fair share of winning out there, of course, but I think May and them have won a lot more than he does. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, Corey. What's well, the stat on not that? Yeah. Mod, the five twenty-five. Well, right. Okay, so okay, but let's let's talk about Brian Kronk. I mean, he was in the top three almost every single race last year with that five twenty-five. Now he might not have the most wins, but he has proven that 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 motor on any night is yep. can win. If you put Brian Kronk with an open motor, he's probably got a good chance of being in the top five with it too. Well, uh, well there's no argument to that, yes, <laughs> sir. Yeah. And there's a saying in the modified division: you combine a crate with talent. Oh, you better hold on and watch well, the top threes well, just and rack I, up. I'm one of those guys, and I've and anybody that knows me, I've been at Willamette for 40 years now, and I, I and I've said it a million times. You were born everybody, there, weren't you? You're, I think, yeah, you're, 40, right year, you're yeah. 40 years old. 43. Okay, so I'm one of those guys that that is a firm believer. It's not a horsepower racetrack. Horsepower doesn't mean anything at Willamette Speedway. It's all about setup and. You want to talk about the perfect examples? That was Bob Jeffrey winning 18 races a with a V6. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that motor was only 252 cubic inches. Yeah, you know, it's but not yeah, horsepower. But you had a big sideboard too. Back then. Yeah, well, that's, that's true. Big sideboard days. But again, <laughs> yeah. big sideboard against the you know the 430 fuel injected sprint car motors. Yeah, yeah. And he was still getting it done. So I, I mean, motors. Okay, it takes a motor. We all know that, but it takes setup to win. And I think and that driver ability. Well, right. You get a good driver, exactly. whether you're with a, a crate engine on a dry slick, I think almost has an advantage over somebody that's got 900 horse. Right. You know, what do you think about it, Jerry? I think um, the advantage is going to be to a lot of these new cars that are coming to town. It's going to be some pretty sweet cars. Well, that's good. It'll mix town. it up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's going to mix it up. Good. Then yes. that's going to be fun for us. Mm-hmm. It, it's going as a spectator. And, yes. As a spectator. Yeah. So another question I want to talk to you about, or another thing I want to talk to you about, was, and this was a big one, the was tires. the tires. Yeah. Okay, with, with the late models, we're sticking yes. with late models now, yes. going to the new big block style tire. We are right. so glad okay. to have you here to clarify this. Well, and that because we've been asked this a million <laughs> times, and so again, I want to say thanks for coming on the show and, because yeah, yeah. Come, yeah, thanks for having me. You've because already given me a new new perspective on on the late model motor packages. I well, mean, it, now I understand it. And it's we can ask the what the, and the what and the what, but when you get the why. Then you know, yeah, there it is. Exactly. Okay. So, uh, late model tire <clears throat> rule package was actually kind of in the works last year, and we were trying to we're trying to save people money is what we were thinking we were trying to do. And me and Chris actually talked about that tire rule a lot last year at the end of the season, and we kind of committed to changing the tire rule at the end of the year, and we're gonna watch it. Because I've talked to Hoosier since and in great length about the tires, mm-hmm. and they said to watch because by not cutting them, if the track does get slick or hard, them tires without cutting them might tend to blister. Mm-hmm. And if that does happen, we I mean, we're, that rule ain't set in concrete, it can be changed. Oh, that's okay. good to know. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if we start blistering tires and they're not lasting because of track conditions and stuff it's so the guys have already gone out and spent a ton of money on tires and already grooved them and whatnot then that money, they, they that get, money is not necessarily run, out no, they get to run them tires for four races right and then they get to run them on the front all year long mm-hmm. right for sure yeah, and i mean and if we find that uh, that they're gonna blister tires and stuff by not cutting them I mean, it's kind of a um, a test, really, to see what's sure. going to happen. Okay. We'll watch it very closely. Right on. And if they start blistering them and blistering the edges off of them and stuff, we'll go back to cutting. Right on. So, so there we go. There's clarification so you, on that. How do you want? How can the drivers help you make that decision? By bringing us or showing us their tires. Hey, this uh-huh. tire's got a race on it. Look at it. You know, it's bad. Right, so right. at the end of the night, if they've got a blistered up tire, you want them to come find you yeah, or I mean, yeah, the promoter. I mean, and Yeah, but I mean, we'll watch too. We're not going to expect them to come sure. chase us. Okay. Sure. We're going right. to watch. Yeah. I okay. mean, Steve Moore races. My brother races. Mm-hmm. I race. You know, we're. Well, and that whole community you know, is pretty tight. Yes. I mean, they're the yeah, feedback gonna, and the communication. We're going to know if it's blistering the tires up. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So I, another question has been asked is why. The no grooving. What's the thought behind that? And what's the. What? Because we really thought it would. We actually really thought that it would save tires. We thought that grooving them actually wears them out faster. Okay. But we're finding out that 
Hoosiers saying otherwise. That's, no, the Hoosiers possibly. isn't saying that they, they won't last longer. He's just saying you might not be able to get the heat out of them. As that's fast. that's what Grooving yeah, oh, yeah. does. So, mm-hmm. <clears throat> they know a tire will last longer without grooving it, but not if you – if it blisters it and gets, if then you it, don't then get it, really goes shot. hard and yeah. it's yeah. August and it's a hundred degrees yeah. out. I mean, okay, because yeah. yeah. we don't so. want we don't want the guy that can buy <laughs> two brand new tires every Saturday night on the rear of the car mm-hmm. to have an advantage. Okay, you know, and and if that's what it's going to take by running just big blocks and not grooving, then we're going to change it. I mean, we want everybody to have fair fair shake sure. at this deal. Right on. Okay. Yeah. Well, especially yeah. with the type Everybody's of money they're putting up for the late model points fund, it, it makes perfect sense. You're putting up a serious chunk of change there. Yes, you are. And it's That's... only going to grow. And I think yeah, we're not going to watch the crates. To we're not really going to probably gauge that tire on the six oh fours. We'll watch the open cars. Well, I think that tire. I mean, like, I mean, it will be affected regardless one way or the other by any race car it's on. But like you said, the six oh fours aren't going to do to those tires what you know. Maya and the duties and and you know those big engines exactly will do yeah so, we'll watch it yeah yeah okay well that's yeah, awesome. we, I mean if we come to the third race and they're blistering them off start cutting them guys yeah yeah you know, okay so we're, at, not, we're not gonna make them buy tires just our hopes is that it's gonna save them money not cost them money very okay. good very so good so just a quick clarification that rule is written almost identically to the um, IMCA modified rule where does Will Lamont Speedway stand on needling? Needling, you can needle a tire. Okay. Yeah. Just don't cut it. Just don't for the, cut it. Well, until, for we, now. until we can get some feedback and see what's going on. Okay. Right. Siping, you can do all the siping you want. You can sipe them. Okay. Yep. Siping and needling, okay. Grooving, uh-uh. Yep. Yeah. Okay. We so. should have had you here weeks ago. We could have stopped what? all kinds well, of We have talk. had this, these <laughs> questions. I mean, when we've talked about it, you know, uh, after the show or before the show, we got to get Jerry in here to, you know, answer these questions because, I mean – we get this. I still have a lot more. Well, and everybody <laughs> does. But, but no, this is good having Jerry here to explain right. what, why, and, and and the reasoning behind it. I mean, you know, people when they don't understand something, you know, there's rumors and there's you know, and that's we don't want to promote rumors and we want to squash them. Absolutely, that's the best way to do it. Yeah. And uh, I mean, our our swears trucking chat line is going nuts right now. So <laughs> questions are um, in the same boat as me, Jerry, sitting over here going, oh, I wonder what they're saying. What chat line? Yeah, what <laughs> chat line? Exactly. It, it, exactly. It's right we, here. We need to get a second monitor and put it up here. We so. really should, yeah. because yeah, we can't see now. Yeah, we so, should put a 64 Well, inch but between up there Chris Frisbee and Larry <laughs> Baker and, and all these guys, I mean, there's a lot of, uh, there's any, a lot of activity. And any good questions? Yeah, there is huh? actually some. Um, here's a good one. Who is managing the racetrack this year? Jerry Schramm for right now. Jerry Schramm for right now. There's, there's, Who's, and, and is what I mean. I would, I would be the interim for till we find somebody. Okay. Chris is a pretty real hard act to follow. I haven't really found anybody that wants to follow. That, that wants, that, yeah. <laughs> that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of responsibility. Yes, it is. there is, and I mean, Chris did a lot out of that racetrack. He and, did a very, very and, good job. And and he was taught by throw the best. Anybody in there, and I want the right person. Sure. And I'll I'll do it in the interim until we find that person. Have you had any candidates? Anybody put their names in the hats? I've I mean, had a couple people, but I I mean, big shoes. There's a couple of them that'll that'll probably be out there. We'll be tr- testing them, mm-hmm. and we'll just okay. See, I'm just not gonna let them cut loose. Yeah, well, yeah, here yeah. you go. Well, that's <laughs> yeah. right. So, I so you. I have a question uh, directly related to that. If if you're prepping the track, are you going to be racing? No. Okay. Not I, I, I'm no. sure there's a lot of people out there. No, no, wait a second. You're not going to race Willamette or you're not racing this year? I, Willamette is what I we're am, talking about. We'll not be doing a lot of racing until we find somebody. Okay. Yeah. All right. And if I'm prepping the track at Willamette, I won't race it. That's, yeah. that's stand-up. Well, that, you know, that's, that's kind that's, of the way it's got to be. I yeah. think that's a good call. I yeah. mean. I do, too. That's very fair. Because, you know, we've, we've heard that argument, you know, I mean. It uh, doesn't give you an advantage because I've prepped banks for years and raced it. Right, and right. Yeah. It wasn't an advantage. but You're I just, all still racing I on would, the same I, track. I need to concentrate on getting Willamette up and rolling. That's a whole than, lot of different. That's a racing. different type of clay yes. than Sunset, too. Yes. So, yeah. That's a tricky a tricky place. Yes. And Chris was so good. Yes. I feel sorry for so him I do to have to that. find somebody for Mod Speed Week because I plan on racing Mod Speed Week. Okay, well, okay. Uh, well, you got the new car. You got a new <laughs> if car. If I got to 
Fandango Chris into it. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, All right. There's your candidate right there. Yeah. Oh, there's. I heard you can run a grader. Uh, I can run a grader. Hey, there we go. Uh, I'll talk to you about that off the air. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I wasn't going to go there. He, Thanks he, a lot, guys. Hey, well, hey, Warren, there's your social security rate. So. <laughs> Here, here's a good point. Oh, I and can't talk on the air. Can I, I mean, pretty valid point here put in from Chris Frisbee says, with the increased payout, not a lot of people are going to pass Willamette to go to Coos Bay. Uh, what was your thought when you saw the six grand from Coos Bay and the NASCAR sanctioning deal? You know, I wasn't really, I mean, it's really cool they're doing something like that down there. Um, Portland did the NASCAR thing years ago right. in 2000. Um, that isn't why Dan Dybul and me got together. It wasn't because to try to keep cars from going to Coos Bay. The um, He called, uh, or actually I called him because I heard that he was going to go do some sponsoring at Coos Bay. And no, no, no. We no, need, no, we no. Need to keep that here. <laughs> yeah, well, he's a hometown guy. <laughs> he's a hometown yeah. guy, yes. And, and so I just, you know, a lot of guys don't know me, and we just had to talk. Mm-hmm. You know, and right. so once we sat down and talked, I mean, he is a great guy. He's got some great ideas. Yeah. And he's a stand-up he's guy. He's gun-ho. He is. He, well, and we he, ha- he actually gun- called he's in. great for the sport. He called in on the show, uh, it was a couple shows ago, he called right. in, and, and yeah, like you're saying, the passion in his voice came out, and he said, hey, look, I'm all about late models, and I want to promote late models, and, and I don't know if you've had a chance to talk with him about what he's doing with the super sport car. Have you heard this? Oh, yeah. This is a good so the charity what he's, car. He's calling it his charity car. Yes, he did say a little bit that he's going to, all the money it wins is going to. What he's going to do is he's going to challenge the crowd every week. He's going to put up X amount of dollars and try to have the crowd match it. Okay. once he, And if he'll start in the back of the pack, right. he gets the crowd to match that pot. He'll start in the back of the pack. If he wins that race, all that money will go to a new local charity every week. Yes. That's, that's see, and that's a I mean, how many guys do stuff like that's pretty right. cool. That boy stands pretty tall. Yeah, I mean he, he does. and you know he heard stand-up. that we had some guys drop out of the car show. We had mm-hmm. eight cars cancel in forty eight hours prior. We would have had thirty two cars here. Right. He said, "Hey, I'm hearing cars are dropping out." I said, "Yeah, we've had about eight of them." He goes, "I'm bringing my super sport now." If you go back and listen to the show two episodes ago, I asked him, "You coming to the car show?" He says, "No, no we're not coming." Not. Yeah. <laughs> he was here, Uns- <laughs> so unsolicited. He loaded up a car and got it here. He in time. did. That was that's. More stand-up so, stuff from him. Pretty cool, dude. So um, I don't know if uh, I know you've heard about uh, the Shriners deal that we're doing with Buzz Mitchell. Yes, I have. Okay. Yes. Yep. Um, the victory visit on the yep. 10th. Are you going? Can you go? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to. Okay. Yeah. I know you got a busy schedule. <laughs> Hard just, to get a commitment yes. out of this guy. Well, with, with four businesses going on. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gosh, imagine. So, um, if I he wanna... doesn't have time for racing, he he's – he, he ain't got no time to go and do anything. <laughs> but, you know, a couple of weeks ago, um, Sandy and I attended a, a Shriners meeting with Jeff Hansen, Bryson James, um, Tom Yak was there. A bunch of us got together to go talk to the Shriners about Willamette Speedway. And something I'm kind of proud of that I don't, I don't even know if you know this, Buzz Mitchell's branch of the Shriners, yes. uh, last year the number one fundraiser for that branch was us at Willamette Speedway. Right. That's what he said. That's a pretty yes. – we did the $8,500 for him. Yes, that's great. That's to give back to the community or, you know, the kids especially. Yes. The Shriners yes. a pretty cool deal. So, yep. yeah. Um, Buzz <clears throat> Mitchell stands right there with Dan Dybul. He's oh, always he doing stand-up oh, stuff. Guy. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's all about doing it again this year, and he wants to be better than last year. Uh, yeah. Well, well, that's – It's already on its way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's doing it. So, back to the, you know, back to the rules and, and getting some clarification on stuff. Um, I know that at the street stock meeting at James Gang over the winter, things got – I don't know how much really got resolved there um, with rules on the Iron Giant and particular track rules. The biggest – and I guess – and you, I know you've answered this a million times, but there's been a, pe- a lot of people asking why the move to the G60 from the slick. Cheaper. All about making okay. it cheaper, more affordable, and evening up the horsepower. That's a big one right there. Yeah. Because you can only do so much with a G60 tire. Oh, yeah. You're, exactly. go- you're going from, what, a 10-inch wide tire to a 8-inch eight eight, wide tire. Eight inch. To an 8-inch hockey puck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> point point proven, 8-inch hockey puck. Right. You know, I, I thought I heard some comments about it being more expensive. Am I confused here? If you, I, if I, you I, compare new G60s to a new slick. Yeah. Not even close. Not even close. The, the really. slick is like. 
one and a half times the amount of a new G60. Okay. okay well, and, and then you compare a used, used to used. I mean, you're. It's not it, going to be close to once again because you're going to get all these modified guys that yeah. has a place. Mm-hmm. I mean, Just, down at Banks, we've been giving them to the guys at Banks for years. <laughs> I mean, Banks has been on G60s in the in the street stocks for three years now, and them guys 